Hey guys, I'm Chef D Max. Welcome back to the kitchen today. A simple fish crudo. I know you guys see crudo on menus all the time and you wonder, how do I make this at home? I'm going to show you right now. Click subscribe if you're not doing that already. Give me a thumbs up if you like this video and ring that bell and I'll send you new things I have coming up. So see you in a second with some crudo. Okay guys, a simple crudo. Let me explain a little bit about it. But while we're doing that, um, a crudo is about having this fish, whether it's fully raw or slightly cured, and I'll talk about that in a second. But um, with uh, the different balances of kind of, it doesn't have to have creaminess, but creaminess is sometimes nice. We're gonna have a little creaminess today. Um, and then it has kind of acidity, salt, lemon, it has spiciness, right? All of these balances, crunch, texture is a big thing too, freshness, uh, herbalness is nice. So it's mixing all those things. So here I've got some, some uh, Thai chilies, just because I, I keep these in my freezer, because you buy a pound of those, when are you going to really use a pound of them, right? Um, they're so spicy, right? Unless you're making hot sauce. So I put them in the freezer, they last, and I just take it out like that and rinse them, they're thawed quickly. I've got one ice cube here, and you can see this ice cube. Now, why am I using a big ice cube? Because I'm going to put buttermilk in here. And I'm only going to use enough buttermilk for probably a couple portions there. So this is probably, you know, six ounces of buttermilk. Okay. And then the buttermilk is going to give us this kind of really interesting, um, really interesting creaminess. Uh, buttermilk is also very acidic. It's fresh. Okay. Now, buttermilk's thick. You can see the texture of it's pretty thick right? So it can be a little bit more watery. Well, we're going to add acid, more acidity to it with some lemon. So what I want to do is take these, these chilies and I'm going to just press on them a little bit to release some of the heat from them, okay? Because I want this to marinate for a second. And then I'm going to take lemon, fresh lemon juice, right? I'm going to squeeze that in here like this, okay? So it's one lemon, about six ounces of buttermilk, right? You can see now it's gonna get a little bit looser, which is where we want it. But the, the water in this is gonna do that too, but we're gonna balance that with salt. So we're putting some salt in there. This is some, this is some uh, pink Himalayan sea salt. Very good for you. Um, I'm gonna put some black pepper in it now as well for a little bit of kind of pepperiness without it being like a chili pepperiness, but just a nice pepper flavor, okay? I'm gonna add that in there and I'm gonna kind of just move this around. You guys can see how I'm just like stirring it up like it's a cocktail, right? And it literally is a cocktail. And I wanna put this on the back of my hand like this. I'm gonna taste it. What I'm tasting for is acidity, milkiness. The buttermilk gives you this really cool uh, lactic butteriness to this and um, this, the lemon in this perfect. So about six ounces of buttermilk and one lemon is a perfect combination. Salt and just pepper. Now, what I'm not getting yet is the, the hot chili. Now, what you can do is if you're not getting enough chili on there, you keep macerating it and pressing this down. Now, we're going to strain that out so we're fine. But what I want to do is I want to get some spiciness going on in this too. So, let me try it now. Now, if I'm not getting enough, I'm gonna take two of these out like this. I'm gonna show you what we do. We just take it and we chop them, throw them back in, right? You wanna make sure you wipe your knife because uh, you don't want to and wipe your cutting board because you're gonna always, you know, have that going on. Okay, let me move this over here. And now I'll stir it around a little bit. And now that should give us some more heat. And we'll let that sit in here. I wanna go. Um, put that in the front here. Now I'm going to talk about the fish. What do we do with the fish? The fish today, I have salmon. Now this salmon is a really cool, now this is actually a farm-raised salmon. I would particularly go for a wild salmon if I was going to buy this in the store if I was you. But um, this particular salmon is farm-raised down here in South Florida, down in Homestead. And they 
they use this really ancient water. They dug down about 4,000 feet. It's uh, this uh, Blue House uh, uh, fish company, and they make this full-size salmon they grow. And the water is so pure, it has no, um, no uh, metals in it. There's no, uh, uh, there's no um, pesticides in there. All those things in modern society that we're adding uh, to the ocean has none of that. The water is our ancient. And so I feel really good when, when I'm eating a farm-raised fish. You've got to know the farm that you're working with and if you're comfortable with how they're raising the fish. And I'm really comfortable with how they raise the fish. Now what I did, because salmon, I just cut uh, chunks of it there. Like this was a filet. You can see. Let me show you. See how it was a filet like this? So I cut the skin off. I don't want the skin on there. And, and what I did was it looks a little weird, right? Why? Because I put salt a teaspoon for this piece right here, I put a teaspoon of salt, teaspoon of sugar, okay? That's it. Now I'm gonna have to rinse this off. I put a paper towel in here, so I wanted that paper towel to absorb the moisture coming off of this fish. So let me rinse this fish clean, and then I'll be right back. Okay, now you can see I've rinsed, this, I've rinsed these off really good, so it doesn't have excess salt and sugar on there. That salt and sugar really cures it overnight. Now if you're working with fish, you hear about people curing fish before they serve it raw. Um, there's different levels in which you can do that. Like if a fish is really fresh, you can eat it raw. But what the curing does is it draws out the excess moisture. So when you're cutting the fish, it's not all wiggly and soft. It has a little firmness because it's, it's excre ex uh, excreted some of its extra juices out, right? And sometimes when you're doing a fish that's kind of soft, that's, that's nice to work with. Sometimes snapper can be soft like that. Now with tuna, I don't do that because tuna is a very firm fish. Wahoo is a very firm fish. I tend not to cure those as much. But salmon, snapper, fish that tends to be a little bit softer, it, what I like to do is cure it lightly and it firms it up. Okay, so it's, this is a process you don't need to do. You could just use fresh salmon right, uh, right from, the, from the market cut it, put it on a plate, be done with it, okay? But I do it this way uh, with salmon and like I said, with snapper. So I'm gonna take my plate here and I'm gonna put some extra virgin olive oil in the center. Be generous because you know what? When you're eating a crudo, it's kind of like you wanna kind of mesh all these flavors of the, of the, uh, the salmon itself, the olive oil, the buttermilk, all the things that you're adding to it that come together in this uh, really nice, moist, beautiful environment. So with this now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut thin, when I, I wanna make sure I cut any bloodline out. See there's a little piece of bloodline, you see how that's brown like that? I wanna cut that off. So people will see only perfect fillets of fish. Now, you see when I put the fillet down in there, what do I do? I wipe it around in my in my olive oil. See that? And then I move it around on the plate. So now it's coated with some olive oil. It would, now what would happen if you left, what is cured like when you talk about Gravlox? Gravlox is this same cured salmon. The only difference is they would put different flavors with it. Like traditional Gravlox is like, um, is different, uh, is dill basically. Sometimes you'll put some shallots with that. You'll put peppercorns, things like that. And then you, you salt and sugar it, and you let it cure for probably four or five days, and then that makes it really heavily cured, um, and that's what Gravlox are. And smoked salmon's the same. They cure that first, and then they, um, they go ahead and do this. So with this, I'm looking to kind of basically have these beautiful pieces like this. Look how wonderful this looks, right? And I just move these around so they look perfect, okay? That's enough for this, this dish right here. So I'll push that to the side. And then what I want to do, I don't need to salt this right now because that has a little salt on it. I'll probably put a little bit of salt right on the top when I'm done. Um, but it's savory enough. Okay, now the rest of these components, I've got some basil, basil here from the farm. So I'm going to take some basil leaves. I'm going to show you how to chiffonade because chiffonading is really fun and it's, got to be something that you do with basil because it keeps the basil very green. Now you could use cilantro with this would be a nice herb as well. Uh, parsley is fine. Tarragon, um, dill is fine. All those herbs are really great with raw seafood. So I lay these down like a little 
almost a basal boat, almost stacked on top of each other. And I fold these up into a long little cigar. And then I cut straight down, very fine. And I'm don't, not going to get impatient and go really fast um, or too quick with how um, I move it along my fingers there. I want to go really slow to get a super fine basil. Okay, that's it. That's chiffonade. Okay, the excess basil I'll just stick here. I keep that sometimes for other things. Okay, and that's it. Um, now, from there... We're just going to mix up some other things. I've got some cucumbers here. These are these are a beautiful Persian cucumber that I've pickled mm. with dill and shallots in there and um, vinegar. I have a, a pickled cucumber recipe. Um, I'll, I'll link it up here so you guys can click through and check it out. It's really good. Um, I've got radishes. Radishes are great with this. Now, radishes, I, I don't like to pickle those as much as I like to just have fresh radishes salted. So put the radishes, I've sliced those thin. You see how this red radish is beautiful and thin, right? And then all I'm going to do is salt that. And then I toss it. Have you ever had just, you know, radish and salt? Radish and salt with butter is even better. So the butteriness feel of this, uh, of this buttermilk with this is going to be fantastic. It's going to be a really good uh, accompaniment, okay? So I want to taste them. See, so adding the salt to that really brings out that bright horseradishy flavor of the radish. I've got some greens here. These are some wild, some wild arugula. Look how beautiful that looks, right? With the wild arugula, I'm going to put a little bit of olive oil on it. I'm going to take some of that excess lemon that I missed out of that lemon there. Okay, and a little pinch of salt. Because you want everything that you put in your mouth to have flavor, right? So that's why these have been salted and sugared. I'm not going to put excess salt on them because everything has got nice amount of salt to it. Okay? So at this point, we're ready to plate the dish however we want. So what I'm going to do is, first thing I'll do is put my sauce on, right? So my sauce here, at this point, let me taste it, right? Yes, now it's got spice to it. That's perfect. So you have that blend of spice, okay, and the rest. So you could just strain this if you wanted to through a fine strainer, but I'm just going to leave it like this. And I'm going to put it all over my plate here. Like this. Look how gorgeous that looks, right? And then... I'm going to put my cucumber. I'm going to fan cucumbers here. You could just lay them all around the plate if you wanted to like this. But I'll just, I'm just going to fan them right here so we could put a bunch because I really like the cucumber with this. And any of the juice, this vinegar that just drips on the plate, that's fantastic. That's just adding extra beauty on there, right? Look at that, okay? And then what we'll do is we'll add our also our salted radish. Now look, when I put, if you look at these, I didn't put any water and I put nothing on this and this radish is already leaking that wonderful juice off of it, right? So I'm putting this on as well, just fanned on here like this. It looks great, right? Look at that. Mm. And then I'm going to put the salad right to the side of it like this okay now to finish this now I'm gonna add a little bit of olive oil on my fish and then excess olive oil around the plate this extra virgin olive oil it's like it's like if you had a plate at an Italian restaurant with the olive oil and balsamic you're gonna dip the butter in it that's what this is about it's about having plenty of flavor right now I've got Crunchiness, I want to add a little bit of nuts, right? These are walnuts. You could add uh, pistachios. You could add um, hazelnuts are really nice. for the, This is kind of very fallish, right? So I just crump these in my hand like this, and I'm going to put these around the plate. Why? When you eat this, you're going to get a crunchiness, right? And that's going to be a fantastic um, 
addition. It's gonna be nuttiness. It's really nice with that buttermilk, with the fish itself. Now, if you, what you can also add too, I have some um, already made uh, crispy shallots that I get from my Asian market. Um, and I love to sprinkle those right on top too. And those give me a crunchiness. Now, obviously if you have shallots at home and you wanna fry those in oil and make your own crispy shallots, that's, that's an amazing thing to have. And the last bit of love on this thing is going to be the basil chiffonade like this. Just spread across that. And look how beautiful that looks. This dish, very simple, just became a restaurant fine dining dish right there, right? And you guys can do this so simple at home with things that you have in your kitchen. If you don't have the radishes, you got beets, do beets instead. Obviously beets have to be cooked or pickled. Um, the, the cucumbers, if you wanna just do this raw with a little salt, you can do that. You know, if you, you know, you could add in different flavors that you like. Zucchini, if you wanted to salt zucchini and slice that, put that on there, it'd be fantastic. So try this at home, simple crudo. You can use salmon, you can use wahoo, you can use snapper, you can use tuna, um, you can use fluke. It's, there's really amazing um, fish out there to do crudo style. If you, you're having a question about that, either message me. You can ask your fishmonger what's the best thing to eat, uh, in his case, crudo or, or sushi style, and he'll tell you. So do this for your friends and family at home. You can throw this together really quick, and it's going to look amazing, and they're going to be super impressed. So stay with me. I'll see you guys back in the kitchen soon. I'm Chef Dean Max.